Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming here uh, at this final farewell for Wandi Motlana. I'd like to welcome those that are watching and streaming on YouTube. Um, yeah, so we're going to start the program off with a prayer, short prayer from uh, Bishop Joshua Maponga. Um, just to start the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the day that we have. Thank you for time that we have, for lives that we live. Thank you for this wonderful soul, person, child that you sent to us. We stand here and we sit here, we watch here today, bidding him farewell. May the proceedings of the day go according to your will. Bless us as we continue and we pray that you will keep us safe by day and by night and all the things that we have planned for today that they will go according to schedule. May your grace be sufficient for us until we meet again. May the grace of the Lord be enough for all of us. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to start with a musical program, um, but if I can just remind everyone to keep social distancing, to keep their masks on throughout the proceedings. There's hand sanitizers at the, at the entrance over there, so please just let's keep to the regulations of COVID. Keep safe. Um, let's just protect ourselves, please. Um, Mr. Mapanga, will you? <laughs>
Thank you very much. That was very beautiful. Anyone that knew Andy would know that music was a big part of his life. He enjoyed it. Um, socializing. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, we've got one of Wandy's friends also that's going to uh, put on a dance piece for us. Um, Wandy was really a supporter of the arts and really enjoyed the creative, sp the creative space. So um, we're going to have a performance from Kitty Petla, who's going to do a little uh, ballet piece for us. Thanks.
Shana Ilanga Zabuya Inkombo Nda Kukinga Ngawe Nashana Ilanga to now introduce uh, Mashadi Motlana to read the eulogy, to speak through, to have a talk and go through the eulogy. Good morning, family and friends. I always thought I was going to speak at my brother's wedding. I looked forward to it. I imagined it. But sadly, today, I speak at my brother's funeral. My brother had nine lives, or at least so he believed. He was fond of telling us the story of once when a bullet went through a car, someone's abdomen, and just touched his skull. He has a small scar over his forehead, and he survived it. Not to mention a long medical history of all kinds of incidents, the longest I've ever seen on any patient that's actually relatively healthy with no chronic illnesses. To just mention a few, he survived a torn Achilles tendon, um, had an appendectomy, which is not unusual, was hospitalized for vertigo for several weeks until it abated. Um, he had retinal detachment, not just in one eye, but in both eyes. Um, well, that uh, surgery for, um, to prevent retinal detachment. 
And so he believed and I believed that he could survive anything. In December 2019, we heard about a virus in China. Most of us thought it would be limited to that country. A few months later, the world changed. We understood that we were living in unprecedented times. Times that would change the way we live, the way we play, the way we love. A few months ago, we breathed a sigh of relief in South Africa, believing that we were through the worst. However, a new, more contagious variant of COVID has appeared. It's puzzled all of us how not only such a health and fit, relatively young, we'd like to think we're still young, man succumbed to this virus. Wandi took all precautions, kept his mask on at home. He hardly went out, even after the restrictions were lifted. And yet, the virus found its way. I would like to use this as an occasion to remind everyone, especially young people, who believe that they are somehow conferred special status, that they will not get this virus to take precautions. I also want to emphasize that it's important for all of us, all South Africans, to get vaccinated. It's the only way in which we'll have sufficient herd immunity. This virus has caused us to change the ways in which we follow our customs, how we grieve, how we mourn, how we get together. It's been extremely difficult. And though I myself have spoken widely about the implications for our mental health, it's still difficult to have to go through it. I know that so many of you have reached out to us virtually, showered us with love, but it's not the same as a hug, which I've been deprived for the most part at this difficult time and I'm sure most of our family and friends too. We long for it, we miss it, but we cannot do otherwise. You'll note that there are baskets alongside each desk, each um, chair. The reason being that we want to avoid any opportunity for us to have to take our mask and gather and therefore cause a super spreader event. It's our responsibility not to let Wandi's life lack the meaning. If anything, this should renew our efforts to be cautious and not to be complacent. Wandi grew up in a family full of love. His birth was a joyous event. He was the first boy child on my mother's side of the family. My mother's name is Zanele, which means that's enough. Presumably, her parents were fed up with having four girls. So, and her sisters all had daughters. It was clear from the outset that Wandi had a very special place in the family. We grew up in Soweto, and when I got my driver's license, I was not allowed to go anywhere without my brother. It felt like he was my chaperone. Crime was rife at that time, especially the rape of teens by gangs called the Jack Rollers. But it infuriated me at the time. I was frustrated that my younger brother should become my keeper. But later in life, I came to appreciate how Wandi's solicitous care for the welfare and safety of not only his sisters, but his female friends was so valuable. He had an unmistakable energy and present and left a lasting impression. He was a charismatic character that drew people around him. He always had a circle of friends. In fact, already by the age of seven or eight, he showed his charisma. We used to spend our childhood holidays in Botswana with my aunt, Kosi Dengake, who was in exile. She noted that Wandi had a gang of hangers on and she would tease him and call him the boss of them all. He attracted an extraordinary array of friends from all over the world and different walks of life. His charm would captivate complete strangers who would approach us and invite us to join them 
on our many holidays together around the world. Perhaps it was his laugh, the laugh that we will all miss. It was a distinctive laugh. It filled up her room and came from the depth of his being. Or maybe it's just because he looked and acted and was a rock star. Many people don't know that Wandi was really quite a private person and he understood what real friendship meant and he had a close circle of friends that he held dear. He was fiercely loyal and went, and went to battle and would go to battle with his friends. He operated on the beat of his own drum. He had no social media accounts he did not really intend to draw attention. He was just being his authentic self. He's actually a very talented person. I was very jealous of his ability to play the piano and also the flute. I was very sad that he never played and I'm sure he'll be very appreciative of the music today. And I thank Kitty for her beautiful contemporary dance piece. We've known Kitty for a very long time, and in keeping with, with the way Wandi did, we thought we'd do something special for him today. Another little known fact is that my brother claimed he could cook. For years, I'd never seen him in the kitchen. I didn't even know if he could work the stove. But once when he was in preparatory school, he came with some shepherd pie and claimed that he'd made them. And that is his evidence for the last 46 years. <laughs> One day was also the kind of man that you could call at any time for help. His friends could attest to that. Any time of the night, if you call for help, he would be at your side. He was also generous to a fault but it was not just the expensive gifts. It, and it, he, it was him giving of his self, his counsel, and his love. It is no surprise that so many of his friends all can lay claim to him. He was special to them in so many different ways. He cared deeply about the condition of his fellow human beings, and this extended beyond his immediate circle. He would not hesitate to help those in need. He also believed in empowering young people. There are many individuals whose life he changed by giving them their first job, providing support and mentorship. He was never one to follow convention, and this extended to how he lived his life, his sense of style, his impeccable taste, and he was brave in his fashion sense, especially how he wore his hair. He set the trends. He was a fount of knowledge. He was an all or nothing approach. As a cigar aficionado, he knew all about the history and manufacture of cigars. He applied the same approach to everything he did in his life, thorough and well-researched. As a child, he had a vast array of model sports cars He's always loved cars, and as an adult, he started to collect the real things. He loves speed and biking, but my mother implored him not to continue with this passion of his. She had a deep fear that he would be injured. He had a sharp wit and intellect. It was difficult to win an argument with him. He knew his facts, and he was principled. We all loved his company. There was always humor, excitement, drama, and sometimes heated debate. Wandi had an indomitable spirit. I mean, absolutely nothing would stop him from pursuing his dreams. If he failed, he'd shrug it off, dust himself up, and start again. This was the secret to his success. He was determined and driven in all his business pursuits. He always knew he wanted to be in business from an early age and had an entrepreneurial affair. When he co-founded Dirillo Capital with Yusuf Baraji, he quickly earned the reputation 
as a deal maker. He was amongst the first black professional investment professionals operating in the financial services. He was not afraid of venturing into new territory and went on to establish the Kansani Group of Companies, an investment company that was involved in several sectors but included um, participation in the first round of renewable energy project, um, projects in this country. He inspired me and others with his tenacity and fortitude. We looked up to him and ex as an example of how to be resilient. In times of adversity, and there have been rough times, he believed that justice would prevail and he continued to fight the good fight. He was fully present when he engaged with people, considerate and kind, but he was also irreverent, and sh but still showed the same respect, irrespective of status. He was remarkable. He showed up in the world unapologetically himself, and this quality made people either embrace him or feel threatened. He loved his family. He was devoted to his mother. They shared a very special relationship. And they grew even closer after our father passed away. He loved his sisters dearly and would not stop himself from sharing their accomplishments to anyone who cared to listen. He was my partner and friend. We socialized together. He'd object oftentimes because we spent so much together that we often got invitations as Shadi and Wandile Motlana. It would make him really angry. He's like, why can't we get separate invites? But in the end, we still traveled together and showed up together. Perhaps people knew that all in any event. Wandi did not allow the Motlana surname to burden him. He charted his own way in life. He was proud of his lineage and heritage and fought to preserve it. So much about who Wandi is, the charisma, the energy, the generosity, being a nonconformist, his irreverence was my father. I've never understood that until now. In fact, until I prepared for today. Wandi loved children and children loved him. He had a deep desire to start a family. He did not want work to be in the way of him being present for his family. He planned to marry and start a family later in life and drew inspiration from my father. Unfortunately, my mother is unwell and unable to speak today. So on her behalf, I've written a message that I believe Wandi would have, that she would have written to Wandi. My dear son Wandi, I loved being your mom. You were everything a mother could wish for. Kind, caring, and devoted. I never doubted that you'd be a success in your life with all your gifts, intelligence, and determination. You were never afraid of hard work. Thank you for bringing joy and laughter in our lives. You will always be my son in this life and hereafter. And I have a message for my brother too. My life would have been a shade of gray without you. You brought color and vibrancy to my world and that of your friends. In Bishop Dutu's words, you don't choose your family they are God's gift to you, as you are to them. I cannot remember a day in my life when I was not your sister. We were born just 13 months apart. You know how much I loved you, and I know you loved me. You ran a good race, and you did it with flair. When I reflect on your life, I now understand why you were so determined to make each day count. Perhaps you understood better than most of us, that we're all on borrowed time. I am so blessed that you chose me to be your sister and a part of your beautiful life. In closing, I would like to read a poem
by Mary Elizabeth Fryer. Do not stand and weep at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I'm a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond lens on snow. I am sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am a swift uplifting thrush of quiet birds in circle flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand in my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die.
Thank you very much. That was absolutely beautiful. Um, I know very well that Wendy would be enjoying this music. Um, we're going to now have the service for the day, and it's going to be rendered by uh, Mr. Bishop, Bishop Joshua Maponga, uh, not Mr. Yes, he is a Mr., but the honored bishop will um, give us the service of the day. Thank you very much. Well, I send you greetings one, one, one more time. Um, my history with Wandi, I think it's short, it's close to 2011, 12, 13, thereabouts, yeah, right about there. And uh, unfortunately, we, we met on an occasion similar to this one, which was a funeral for one of our friends in, in Soweto, and uh, I was just making a transition in my spiritual space from the mainstream churches where I used to work, and I was starting to ask critical questions about life, and uh, just been to Israel, studied a bit of Hebrew, just uh, done some theology, and what, and African culture, and all these things, and I mean, if you're a professional in any field, you want to know everything that is happening around that field, and as a Churchman, or spiritual person, I had taken my journey uh, into various corners of life and learning. And once when I met up with Paul and uh, Wandy, who were burying a friend in Soweto, we were there when Paul was getting married. We, uh, a bishop like myself, I once did a Bible study. You won't believe this if I tell you. Wandy asked us to do a Bible study in a cigar lounge in Merrow's Arch. Not, 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 not Merrow's Hotel. There's another one closer to the other side. There's a nice big cigar lounge there. Now here I am as a whole bishop and I'm being told, yes, now teach us. Teach us about this Jesus and this God story. And uh, all my life I would never think that I would end up uh, re reciting passages and sharing scriptural content in a cigar lounge with wine and everything on the table. But that was wonderful for you. You didn't need to wait for tomorrow to do something else. If it had to be done, it had to be done now and it better be done in the best way possible. I, I have fond memories, fond memories, and uh, not so good ones, because uh, two years ago, same time, we was, he was home when, when I lost my young brother, uh, who was close to him. And I introduced my young brother to Wandi, but he ended up running errands for Paul and Wandi more than me, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, all being said, uh, the beginning of the year for the past two years has never been the same. And the two most important and dear people to me have, uh, have left us. I want us to do an exercise, much more relaxing exercise. Uh, you don't mind, apart from the setup of the cameras, if I can walk around or something? Are you all right? Okay. I would like you to show me your, your hand. I would like to show me your hand and let's do some nice little exercise that will release some stress a little bit. Show me your hand. How many fingers do you have on your hand there? How many fingers do you have? Uh, five on the right and you've got five, another five on the left hand side. That makes them ten fingers in total. If you have not had any accident, you must look around and you have ten fingers in your hands. So let's do what I might call an African historical appreciation of our identity as we are laying my friend to rest. This is the kind of content that me and Wandi will be talking about. So please uh, pardon me if, we get, if I get carried away in some philosophical uh, conversations discussing how many angels can dance at the sharpest point of a needle. That is the quality of our conversation. So let's show me again your hand. Five fingers you have. So let's uh, drop this one as the first one. That is you. Okay? That is that is you. That is your identity. So the first finger here, we say this is your father on your, 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 your grandfather on your father's side. All right? Your grandfather on your, on your father's side. That is your grandmother on your father's side. That is your grandmama on your mother's side. And that is your grandfather on your, father, on your mother's side. No wonder maybe when someone sticks to you, the middle finger, you all get angry. Now you know why. You know who sits there. It's like you want to go and sleep with my, 
my, my, the mother of my mother. You know, it cannot be more insultive than that. So with these four that you have, the two males and the two females makes the four. And the four make the one. That is your identity. Are you with me? That is your thumb for your identity right there. Meaning to say, when you come into existence, therefore, it's a combination of these four people that are there. But if you should take mom and dad and make them individuals, then you might discover that mom has her four on the left and dad has her four on the right. These two meet together. All right. Let's go together nicely. The four on the left and the four on the right. These four, these four. They come together to make your mom and your, and your dad. Now, there you go. So these, make these two here. And you can already see a diamond. You can already see the beautiful structure of our official gates into this world. That is our women. I know some people don't like to be called our women but they call us our men. So forget about politics. Let's just get this thing done properly. So you have this beautiful diamond shape that actually represents the door through which you come into this existence. Combining your grandparents on your mother's side and on your father's side coming together and there you come out as a human being. Therefore, for you to appreciate this uh, small introduction, I want to share with you concepts of time. Then I'll come back and conclude on it. I hope you can follow me closely. Every civilization that celebrates itself marks its own time so that it can have its seasons for various activities from the Greco-Roman times to the Antediluvians, you can go to the Acadians, you can go back even to Atlantis, you come back to Kemet, study from China to the pyramids of Peru, you will find that time becomes critical because through time you are able to diarize and document events in your own life. I sat down the other day and I found out while I was thinking, juggling with my mind, that there are various aspects of time or various perspectives of time or world views of time. There are those who believe that time is linear. You start here, and you go there, you go there. These people are particularly the Romans, uh, from which the greater European community comes from, which is called the northern perspective of thinking, the European way of thinking. So it's today, it's tomorrow, it's next week, it's next month, and etc. And time is linear. We are trotting, chasing 21, 22, 2023, 2024, 2025. And they look at time from that perspective that we have a past we are coming from, we have a future that we are going to. Beautiful perspective. Nothing wrong with that. And through Romanization and Hellenization, we all have become colonial subjects of looking at time in that perspective. If you should move to the Zoroastrianism and some of the religions of the East, they might shock you a little bit when they tell you that time is not linear. Time is cyclical. Time is cyclical. It's zodiacal. It turns. And then they put all your stars and all your various months of birth and etc. And we turn around time as it were, time repeating itself and not going anywhere. It's not going in that direction. It is turning around certain events and the moon and the sun and the stars become the watches that are in our hands. The sun for the second hand, the moon for the hour hand, for the minute hand and the stars for the hour hand. Are we together? But I sat down again and I've found that as an African, maybe hallelujah to the northern thinking with their linear time. Hallelujah to the East with their zodiacal time. But as Africans, we believe that time is vertical. Time is vertical. It never goes anywhere. No one has ever left yesterday. No one has ever seen tomorrow. Even at 12 midnight, you cannot say hello tomorrow. Life is present. 
And depending on which worldview you think, it determines your spirituality. It also determines your eschatology, the way in which you view the future. Since the African believes time is present, it affects the way they think. Those who believe time is linear, it affects also the way they think. Those who think time is cyclical, it also affects the way they think. I don't want to take time to spend it there. Let me speak at home so that you can appreciate why I gave you that illustrious introduction. Time is present. And since yesterday, never left. And tomorrow has never come. Today has constantly been present. And if today is present, therefore nothing has ever, has ever left us. And nothing that is not here will come. If that is true, therefore, the African believes that our forefathers have not left us. Because time has never moved. They are present. Does that make sense now? The whole idea, therefore, when the African begins to say, we believe in the presence of our ancestors, in the presence of the spirits that are around us, it is with that understanding that they have never gone anywhere. They have constantly been present in our life. And in the verticalness of time, therefore, life must be celebrated to appreciate not only the visible, but also the invisible. Not only the present, but that which seems to have passed away. That which is within the curtain and that which is without the curtain. Therefore, life stops just being me and you. Life begins to become a diamond. Where those who are on this side of the curtain, the physical space, should always understand that even in the absence of that which we cannot see, it has never left us at all. Now you can look on my head and you'll understand how these diamonds come together to mix that which is above and that which is below. The four pillars of every life. So every morning when I wake up, I turn my head onto my left shoulder to remember my grandmothers on my mother's side. I turn my head to the right to remember my grandmothers on my father's side. I turn my head backwards to remember my grandfathers on my mother's side. And I look forward to remember my grandfathers on my father's side. That gives me the compass through which I run my life. I have spiritual impact on the left. I have spiritual impact on the right. I have support that is behind me. I have support that is ahead of me. And in case you did not know, my name is Joshua Maponga, Vudzijena, Chigaramboko, Kugaramashambahuda. In the Tswana culture, we are cowboys, the monkeys, those that climb the trees. In Sutu culture, we are the Mtsuenengs, the Chwene. In Kosa place, we are the Jambases, the Lisas, the Welili Wangomva, Bonyaonche, Bonkopas Neto. In Swaziland, we are the Mtolos, we are the Fakudzes in the Zulus. We are the Skosanas in the Ndeveles. We are the Piris in Malawi. This grand kingdom of the monkeys connects all of us on the universe. So find out from your own tribes. Who are you and what are you connected to? You may just find out there is more that surrounds you than that which has been taken away from you. With those few words, I want to remind you, if time has not moved, if time is not turning, if time is present, then everything that we need is within the reach of today. Wandile has not left us. Wandile is still with us. And if you can look carefully, carefully, he has just moved to the other side of reality where our eyes cannot see, but our spirits will constantly connect. I thank you. Thank you so much, Bishop. I fully agree. Wandile is with us. I think we felt his spirit throughout this process, and he'll forever be with us. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to have a musical uh, program right uh, moment right now with Maponga as well. And then we're going to get Sha, uh, Moshima, Wandi's sister, to also come and speak afterwards to read them. Sorry.
to read the obituary. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mahoney.
Firstly, I just want to apologize in advance um, if I stumble on my words when reading this. This is probably the hardest um, thing I've ever read in my life. Wendy Lamutlana was born on the 28th of April in 1974 in Soweto, the second born child of the union between Dr. Ntato Mutlana and Zanele Mutlana. He started his education at Our Lady of Mercy in Craig Hall and then went on to Ridge Propriety School. He matriculated at St. Albans College in Pretoria. He then went on to attain a BCom in UNISA and an MBA at Gibbs, being one of the first cohort of MBA program at that institution. He completed his course work for the DBA but never submitted his theses as his business interests took priority. Mondil was an astute businessman and a serial entrepreneur and never had a job except when serving his articles. He was always determined to be his own boss and carve his own destiny by embarking on unique and trailblazing entrepreneurial opportunities. From an early age, he started his own ventures from his parents' home before completing his first degree. His early business span across a few sectors, from an advertising agency and an energy drink called Dark Dog. He tasted his first big corporate success with Dirello Capital, which he sold to NetBank, and then went on to lead a consortium that established the Consigni Capital Group of companies which held stakes in public-private partnership company contracts with governments to build operate and manage a private business, prison rather, private prison, um, Kutuma Simtumele Correctional Services, at the time the largest private detention center in the world. He also led the group's venture as an executive chairman into renewable energies which saw the group become equity investors in three solar power projects, the Lizazi, Lisedi, and Jasper power companies. When he fulfilled the roles of founding director and first chairman of these companies. My brother will always be remembered for his astute commercial mind and his advice was valued by various boards um, he was a member of. Wendil was a strong proponent of black economic empowerment and instilled those principles in every business he created. Wendil was a true humanitarian and was willing to help anyone who asked for food, shelter, or a leg up. He paid for school fees for friends, family, mem family and members of the community without even seeking acknowledgement or a return. He was a founding director and generously donated to the Dr. Mudlana Foundation. Wandil exuded a generous spirit and opened doors for many young people. He was a first team cross country runner at school, but gave, his run gave up his running and became a fitness fanatic. He was disciplined with his training and was strict with his diet. His real indulgence being his love for cigars. His charm and charisma drew many friends from all walks of the world, whom he held so dear. They in turn enjoyed his generosity of spirit and love, which he gave so openly and easily. His trademarks were his bellowing laugh and his radiant smile that he shared wherever he went. One day to love his family and was devoted to his mom and his sisters. He was a courageous, strong, warm young man who was a pillar of strength for his family. He loved, his cho he loved children. <laughs> he loved children and had hoped to marry at the start and start his family at the age of 48. His benchmark being his father who had his older sister at the age of 48. He loved life on his own terms, and though he left this world prematurely, we are comforted that he lived his life to the fullest. Our beloved Wendy succumbed to COVID on the 3rd of January 2021. He will continue to be loved by his mother, his sisters Mashadi and Mushima, other siblings, his extended family, and his many friends. I mean, in conclusion, my sister had been waiting for my message um, to read her speech since yesterday. I really tried to keep it in a small paragraph, but it was really difficult. But I'll just like to say, Wandi, I will chat to you often. And as the bishop explained our existence, 
I cannot wait to see you in my dreams. And in that note, I promise you that I will live my life with love and in light so you can always find us or me. Robala oh, Gantle. Sorry, guys. Robala Kahoto, Kabo Mukhat. Thank you, Mishima, for that. Um, just to also acknowledge those that are watching us on YouTube, we see the messages coming through. Thank you very much. Um, it really is comforting during this um, tough time as we try to celebrate Wandi. Um, but we do see the messages. I'll probably just read a few. Um, Eunice Maijana, Robala Sintle, Toka, 2008 was a beautiful year with you in it. Thank you for everything. We'll cherish the beautiful memories forever. Exe Dai Lach. Um, we've got Linda Mwekezi, rest in power, Wandi. Beautiful service today. That resonates so well with your spirit. Farewell. Um, just so many messages coming through. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to have another musical item from the bishop, and then we're going to get the, vo the vote of thanks from uh, Dr. Peter Mazeke. Thanks. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning to those who are watching through YouTube. It's been, when this passing on has been a very, very difficult period for me. But Bishop Maponga, I also believe that time is vertical. I believe in the philosophy of living for today. In my life, there's no tomorrow or yesterday. And thanks for, for those kind words that help some of us to move on through these difficult times. COVID is within us. The second wave is up there. It's out there. The numbers are increasing all over. I would ask everyone who's watching to please be cautious, please be careful, and uh, that's what I would ask for. My duty is to give a vote of thanks. It's always difficult during this time, PP road, where you sometimes feel that uh, one did left us when he was young, but we always have to thank God for having allowed us to spend time with him, even if it's for the past 46 years. He lived his life, he has made an impact on a lot and lot of people. And uh, for that, I'd like to thank the God for having given us this time. And I'd also like to thank Bishop Maponga, because one is different, and I think this farewell is special and different. Thanks. Bishop and the, your band as well, you've made today's Wendy's Farewell a very special one. And it's quite different from others in my books. I'd like to think, thank Kitty. I've known Kitty for a long time for the ballet dance that she, she did. It's special and we we'll always appreciate your presence, Kitty, within the family. Yesterday, there was a, a memorial service that was organized by Wendy's friends and business associates. I'd like to thank all of them for having shared those stories with us, because those are the stories that will keep us going into the future. Our brother is present. Time is vertical, so we'll always be with him, Bishop. I'd like to thank the Kupani Funeral Parlor and the city of Jobek for making our life very easy during these difficult times. They were always there for us, and we'll make sure that uh, I, I just want to thank them for that. I'd also like to thank all the people that made it possible, all the arrangements to make sure that uh, today's farewell is what it is today. But most of the t most thing that I would like to do is to thank my sister, Mashadi and uh, Mushima, for being there, for not losing focus, to making sure that this day happens the way it is. Thank you very much. Be strong, Shadi. I know you're going through difficult times, but just be strong, my sister. I thank you. On behalf of the Mutlanas, Thank you. Thank yes, just now. I just wanted to just make a quick note. We will be going to the cemetery um, from here. So those that are watching on YouTube, there will be a break in um, in, in the, the streaming, so um, it will pop back up once we get to the cemetery. Bishop, thank you. You can grace us with your music.
엉터 어디 갔지, 엄마? 엉터 어디? 
Ça fait le numéro bon.
I'd like to welcome you all to uh, this uh, one that is final uh, resting place. Natasha, wish you come forward and read a few messages that have been sent forward from our social media space and other platforms. Thank you so much for the mes messages that are coming through. Um, I'll go. I'll be very quick with them. Um, hi there. Um, we'd like to say to our son, brother, cousin, nephew, Wandile, it's with a heavy heart that we're gathered here today, not to mourn the loss of Wandi, but to rejoice in his wonderful life. It's times like this that remind us just how precious life is. Anyone who has had the opportunity to meet him or know him as well as we do are better off for it how do we live without you because death did not end the relationship we have with you your love is our life's blood that we continue to be ingrained that will continue to be ingrained in our veins you are still with us just in a different way and that's so true our love is the fa fundamental fabric of our extended family, the Motlanas, the Kamas, and the Sibegos, and will remain eternal. Where there was infectious, roaring laughter, we are going to be reminded of you. Where there was wonderful food and happy gatherings, we're going to be reminded of you. Where people needed to be encouraged, you were there, and we will be reminded of that. Our tears will always reflect as we cry with shock that you were taken away from us so soon at your prime there are still so many so many things ahead of you that you wanted to accomplish all the, the all that we are left to live with are the precious moments that we shared memories of our family gatherings and fun times Wendy went out of his way to make sure everybody felt special and that we all each mattered and it's a rare trait that is hard to find in these current times the leadership role you played in caring for our family is reflected in the void that you have created. You will always be reminded and you will always be remembered for your gallant need to ensure that we are all well and good and good spirits. All of us, including friends, colleagues, and family, can attest to this. We each have our special stories to tell about you, Wandi. Your life will always remain alive and told even to the generations to come. 
Keeping your memory alive will be one of our life's purposes. The world has lost a good son, a brother, a cousin, a nephew. Today, but God has gained a great one. May God bless the family. May God bless the friends. And may God bless the, all of the people that haven't been able to come here and say to Wandi, Wandi, we love you. Wandi knows, guys. He knows very much that you love him. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words. Um, there are three things I want us to conclude with for this uh, session. The seeds, the tree, and the fruits. The seeds, the trees, and the fruits. They are all different from each other. The roots support the tree so that the tree can bear fruits. And inside every fruit, there is a seed that must be planted again for another generation. You cannot tell what kind of a tree from the type of the seed. But what is inside the seed is inside the tree. Life, our grandfathers, our fathers, and ourselves, in character we can be different but what is inside them is inside you your ancestors could simply mean you in your previous life those who have done biology you can't claim anything on yourself from your DNA to your looks to your height, to your balding head, sometimes even some diseases come to us in terms of our genealogy. Hence doctors will always ask you, do you have a history of? Do you have a history of? Anyone who has taught you that your forefathers are demons, they are demons themselves. Because if your forefather is a demon, then what are you? You are a demon waiting to become. Such an insult on African culture is appalling. We are here to plant a seed. We are here to plant him in one state. He will come back in another state. He will leave in another state as he has left, never left us. But it's just transition from one type of life to another type of life. That's why the book of Ecclesiastes 3 says, there's a time for everything under the sun. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to gather stones and a time to scatter. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to embrace and a time to push away. We can say a time to laugh and a time to mourn. For all these are seasons of life. It is my prayer that as we place Wandi here, as we plant him here, just a few graves away from his father, as he joins the greater Mekana tribes, we hope that in the other space of life, where he continues to be what he was meant to be, leaving us behind for a few days, all of us, this is our final destination to everything that we have gathered, to the speed the laughter, the pain, the anger, the unresolved issues. Just remember one thing, the final conclusion of the matter is that you will end up as dust. From dust we have come, to dust we shall return. Go you therefore, go home, eat your food with gladness. It is now that you are still alive, that you can do something with yourselves and with your life. With those few words, be comforted. With those few words, be of good courage. With those few words, cry a little bit, but after crying, wipe your eyes. For you are not crying for him who has died. You are crying for yourself. And the worst of all tears are things that you know you should have done, 
when the person was still alive. Now that they are gone, you can no longer do it anymore. So take your time to express yourself, to talk, to scream. If you wish, like I do sometimes, take off my clothes and I run in the rain. I'm only going to live here but once. After we are dead, we won't be able to enjoy and experience life in this form. With those few words, be comforted one and all. I'll play a song as the casket is being lowered. Yeah. 
as long as we eat, we confirm that we are dying. The materials that we eat will always take us back to themselves. No one amongst us is stronger than nature, of which we are. With those words, we therefore commit his body, and we say dust to dust, and ashes to ashes, and the spirit will go back to the one who created it. messages in the meantime. Um, this one's from Auntie Small. Mem 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 memories of Wandi Moklana. The most beautiful moments always seem to accelerate and slip beyond one's grasp, just when you want to hold on to them for as long as possible. I remember when Wandi and Mashari were still very young. Wandi always knew what he wanted. We as adults would always choose a meal from the menu for him. When the meals were served, one day, on the contrary, would say to the waiter, is this all you have? The waiter would then go to town and explain all that they had. One day would confidently say, then you should have asked me what I wanted to have. We all believed, we, he believed in decide and act now. A thousand words will not bring you back one day. I know because I've tried. Neither will a thousand tears, I know because I've cried. Rest in peace, one day. Thank you.
This is the last message that we have for the day um, for my cousin. It's, it's so real, Wendy. It's really real, but we continue on. This message is from Rankoe Luhabi. Please forgive my Swazi accent. We can't believe you're gone. You were always a happy soul with unique laughter and a, the most boisterous and playful nature. From when we met you in Botswana, when you and Shadi used to visit, we had so many adventures together in Khabaroni, driving around Botswana, even flying cars, smiley face. Everyone could not help but love and be charmed by you. To my mom, you were and will always be her boy. My boy, I still can't believe that I can still, I will not see you again. I love you so much. Rest in peace. You will always be in my heart. One day, you have lived a life where the glass was always three quarters full, not halfway full, three quarters full. You always saw the lighter and the more positive side of life. This is how we will all remember you. Gone too soon, gone too soon. That's all the messages I have for today. Thank you.
in our hearts your love we keep, and forever we remember you. O oh, treasured gift for so many, O oh, love song of God to us all, with integrity you lived, with great charity you gave, and forever we remember.
Thank you all for gracing and coming to give our friend such a wonderful and a peaceful uh, transition. We appreciate you so much. Due to the health issues and the complexities of uh, the corona uh, era we are living in, there will be no meeting after this. We are not going to be meeting anywhere. You are all you will all be excused to and proceed to your various homes and abodes. Please be safe, be healthy, and uh, stay, stay sanitized. And, uh, do your best to maintain your good health. Shall we pray together in conclusion? May the grace of our Lord, may the love of the Omnipotent One, may wisdom and peace reside and abide with us. Now that we part from each other, we don't part away from His presence. May He constantly be with you in your going and in your coming. Whatever that you are going to be touching, may it be blessed. May the lands you walk on be blessed. May the labors of your hands be productive. Until we meet again, may the grace of the Lord be sufficient for us all. Amen. Yeah.